Hi, my name is David Allen, and today we're going to talk about the Texas Emergency GIS Response Team and give a little bit of a behind-the-scenes look at how we handle a GIS-based disaster response. First, let me do a little introduction. My name is David Allen, like I said. I'm the GIS manager for the City of Euless, been here over 30 years. I'm also the State Director of Operations for the Texas Emergency GIS Response Team, which is a nonprofit group, and we're all volunteers in that group. And I also write textbooks. I've written over nine GIS-related textbooks for Esri Press and for GISGuidebooks.com. Let me start off by saying a bit about our agency, the Texas Emergency GIS Response Team, give you an idea of what we do across the state. So as I said, we are a 501c3 nonprofit in the state of Texas. We have over 300 trained members, and these come from municipal government, from uh, private industry, from county, state, regional agencies, all over the state. Each of those will provide their time at no cost to come in and help uh, run our operations. We do have our own equipment. We have a trailer load of equipment uh, that includes laptops, projectors, plotters, our own networking, generators, everything we need to run self-sufficient. We also bring in our own software, our own data templates, and pretty much everything we need to, to start up and go. We can do on-site mapping, we can do remote mapping, which is what we're going to talk about today, uh, and we respond to pretty much any agency or any government agency within the state, and everything that we do is coordinated with the Texas Division of Emergency Management. So let me first start with ArcGIS Pro. A lot of the maps that we do start as an ArcGIS Pro project, and these could either be just displayed as a map in the EOC, and we edit those as the disaster unfolds, or these could also be served up as a web app, and we'll see how both of those things are done. So one interesting project that we did that started in ArcGIS Pro was to make data sets for all the state agency boundaries. Uh, I searched around and I only found a few uh, actual GIS data sets of state boundaries, but a document have, was presented to me that had diagrams and drawings of dozens of state agencies and the boundaries and areas within the state that they covered each covering different arrays of counties and uh, none, none were the same. So we took on that task of building the data sets for these and when we were done we turned this data over to the, uh, the, the state's GIS repository in Austin through TENRIS, the Texas Natural Information Resource System. We had about 25 or 30 different EGRIT members work on this. Everyone would take one of the little diagrams and uh, a data set of the counties of the state and then merge all these various counties together in whatever configuration the diagram showed. And from that, we have about 50 agency maps that popped out of that. Since we put that up, and I'll show on the next screen, uh, we've had a lot of projects suddenly want to use these state agency boundaries. So it was, although it was an ad hoc request, um, it turned into a very valuable data set. So here's how this project started, and it's just the boundaries, polygon boundaries of all the counties in the state of Texas. And we basically look at the diagram and then zoom up to an area, select out the counties involved in one of the particular districts, for whatever region that was, select them and merge them together. And then you just fill out the attributes for that district, move on to the next one, and just make your way across the state. And by the time you're done, you have the boundaries for that agency. You save that off as a new file, open the empty counties and start again. So here's AgriLife and the AgriLife offices. Um, this became very important when the food banks came into play on food distribution and how many unemployed people we had and such as that. Here's all the councils of government. Here's the Department of Agriculture. Um, I'll skip a few of these. County Health Services, Housing and Community Affairs became a big deal um, when we were looking at um, not allowing evictions during a certain period of time. Here's TDEM regions. Here's Texas Rangers. On and on, on and on. Railroad Commission, uh, the Workforce Commission, they're the ones that handle the unemployment insurance. That became a big deal. We had the prison system, uh, all the university systems, so they're all in here. So you can see how many different agencies we built boundaries for turn those over to Tenris, and these just get used uh, over and over and over again. Early on we were asked to do a rate of rise map shown by county statewide, 
and also uh, later we were asked to do the same sort of map for the prison system, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice, and show what the cases were doing prison by prison. It's not showing case counts, because those always go up. It's showing the change from day to day, and that's more commonplace today, but um, in March and April of 2020, uh, that, that was pretty uh, forward thinking to, to look at rate of rise as opposed to standard count. One of the interesting things that we did in this was to use a lot of arcade expressions and build those in ArcGIS Pro and then serve that up to ArcGIS Online. And what happens is, of course, the arcade expressions transfer seamlessly to the online environment and the pop-ups work exactly the same way in the online map as they did in your ArcGIS Pro map. So this is the table we would get from the De Department of State Health Services, or DISHES, as they're called. And it basically had a bunch of title information at the top, a bunch of oddly formatted column names. And then as you scroll down through, there is a county name and the total number of cases in that county for any given day. So it's a day-by-day -day total accumulated cases. So we wanted to turn that into GIS data, which in itself was a trick, because you have to strip off all of this header information and then reformat all the field names to be correct. And then there's some summary information at the bottom. You've got to take all that out. Uh, generally, what I like to do is make a, a new tab called GIS data and then copy the data over to that tab and reformat it. And that way I have the original untouched data, but I have a, a um, tab called GIS data that when I import this into ArcGIS Pro, I know that that's the data that's already been correctly formatted. And this is what it looks like in the map. So we basically have the county polygons. I would do a relate between the county polygon and that dishes data set by county name. And that brings in all the other fields. And you can see we've made some arcade expressions for each of the last seven days. And I think there was also a, uh, an average. So let's look at one of these arcade expressions. And it's basically take, taking two of the fields and subtracting them. What's unique about this is it's taking two existing fields and making a new value that did not exist before. And I do that over and over and over again to get the difference from one day to the next day. So between the 28th and the 27th, this is how many cases would have occurred, the rate of rise. The next part of that was to build a chart. And if we look at the chart information, uh, you can see basically just turning on those expressions for the last seven days, and we can see what the chart looks like. If I click on one of the counties, and I'll click on Dallas County, it's a more interesting chart. You can see I've got today's count. I have the county population, which I was pulling from the county data set. The count was coming from the dishes data set in the related table. I have the date of the last change. This was pretty far back. Uh, as I said, we automated this, and then dishes actually took over this project from us. Uh, and then there's the data. There's the rate of rise. And you can see over the last seven days, what has this been doing? So when you started talking about flattening the curve, this was how you monitored flattening the curve. And then when this turned into an ArcGIS Online web app, you can see there's also Dallas County. And the chart shows a little bit differently, but you're, you see the same thing. This also had the arcade expression for average of the last seven days and the average of the previous four days. And um, after a while, those numbers started making the news to say what the daily averages were doing uh, going up or going down uh, over a seven-day period. We were also doing a similar project for the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. They would release data every evening about 5 o'clock, and it showed different data. And you can see they showed pending tests, how many negative tests, positive tests uh, for each of their prisons, how many people were medically restricted, how many people were medically isolated, and object ID, I think uh, ArcGIS threw that in there for us. Um, but you would track this day by day by day. This got to be a pretty tedious project, and uh, the good folks at teachmegis.com took over this project and ran it for about a week and a half before TDCJ finally got their GIS people on board and took this over from us. So uh, we, we got away from doing the daily maintenance, which gets to be a bit of a chore. But this is how the data would come in. 
and then I have a pop-up configured and the interesting thing on this pop-up is using this carousel device. You can see I have a chart, I have a carousel. Chart would put um, individual charts over and over and over so I could have 10 different charts but they would display this way in the box, one on top of each other and I would scroll down through all the charts. Makes your pop-up really really long. With the carousel it drops them one on top of another and you just move with, a, with an arrow right to left from chart to chart to chart. I'll show you how that works. But here's all the charts. So the change in positive tests, the change in negative tests, the change in pending tests, the change in medical restriction, and the change in medical isolation. And those got reconfigured every day. So this turns out, and of course then we would just serve this up to RTS Online and make a uh, project out of it. There you can see the actual data and we would pull that data into RTS Pro to do the edits and then we would pop it back to RTS Online and then run out the um, application. Let's we'll see how this looks. So there's the entire state and all the state prisons. Glad I'm not there. You think it's bad being in prison. Try being in prison with COVID. And here's how the pop-up works. So there's the unit name, um, a lot of uh, the other information. Here's a lot of the individual stats. We were also involved in a drill at the Comanche Peak Nuclear Power Plant, uh, which is just west of Fort Worth. And we did a few things there that were of particular interest. One of the uh, really nice things we did was to build a data set in ArcGIS Online, but open it in ArcGIS Pro to do the edits. So that as the event was unfolding, you could sit there at your Pro desktop with all the neat tools and all the stuff you knew how to do and make all your changes and as soon as you hit save the shared version of that that was in RGS Online automatically updated. You didn't have to go through a share process at all. So it let us use some really complex Pro tools to demonstrate and show data in RGS Online. Here's the data we built for that nuclear power plant exercise and I always like to put a little folder over here for each of the different projects that we do. So here's CPNPP, Comanche Peak Nuclear Power Plant, and then all of the data that we built for that exercise goes in this folder. Makes it very easy for me to find it and to search it. Up here I can search for data within that folder. Uh, but let's look at some of the maps we did. There's a CNPP, this is a drill web map. Everything that we did, we had to put this as a drill on it because um, if any of this information were ever seen by the public and someone thought this to be a, a true occurrence, uh, it would be a major thing. A, an accident at the nuclear power plant is a major thing. So everything that went out had this as a drill on it. There's that web map and like I said, what we wanted to do was open this in ArcGIS Pro, which I've already done, so I'm just going to switch to that page. And here it is. Now as soon as I make a change in this map and save, that change will occur in any of the applications that are using this data set. I don't have to, I don't have to go to share and make a new web layer or anything like that. I'm editing the web layer out of ArcGIS Online, but I'm using ArcGIS Pro to do it. The nice thing there is I get all the, the easy to use zoom and pan tools, I get the selection tools, I can make different items selectable or not selectable. Um, there was one of the siren locations, if I select that, I get it in its list. Right now it's active, I'm going to turn it to normal, which means it's not going off. Right, and I'll hit apply, and it should change its little color. Yeah, whatever that means. So, change the color of the siren. I could do evacuation zones, which was a more common thing that we did. So right now it's at normal, meaning there's no evacuation. Um, you can show that it's a shelter in place, you can show that it's recommended for evacuation or that the evacuation has been completed. I'll apply that. And then just by hitting save, that information, save all edits, yes, that information is now updated in all the web apps that are consuming this data set. So now let me say a bit about some of the applications that we built and how we use those across different disasters. 
So one of the apps we built for TDEM was to display all of the healthcare facilities across the state, but they wanted to be able to do summaries uh, in certain areas. And so I built the app in Web App Builder, and I added a widget called Situational Awareness. And that lets you draw a, a polygon or do a single point and a buffer distance, and it will do summaries on the features within those regions that you've drawn. So here's what the app looks like that I built with Web App Builder. And you can see there's a lot of data in this thing. Uh, general hospitals, nursing facilities, healthcare, ambulatory surgical, on and on and on and on. Uh, hospital bed based nursing, all this other. In addition to the boundaries of the Emergency Medical Task Force uh, in Texas, that was one of those state agencies that we built and we, no one thought you'd ever need that until this project came up and suddenly we needed those boundaries and we already had them. So we looked like the heroes in that instance. Uh, so let's take a look at it in the actual web app builder and see what it took to build this because a lot of layers in there. Okay, so this is the edit layer, uh, the edit window of web app builder and I've gone to the widget window and you see I have uh, the layers widget and the situation awareness widget and if I edit that, I'll get a new box. These are all the layers that I wanted to do a summary on. Big long list. You add these one by one. Add tab means you're adding a layer. It's a little misleading here. The tab refers to a tab that will appear in the final output. But at this point, when I say add tab, I'm adding a layer. So I had to click add tab for each one of these layers. As the layer goes in, then you go over here to edit and you say, what do you want to happen with that uh, layer? And this information will be displayed in the tab that you've created. A little misleading. And it's hard to configure this thing. It takes a long time. I wanted the field uh, ICU beds. I labeled it. I wanted to sum it. Surgical beds, uh, NICU beds, postpartum beds, LRPD, all the other things. All of these things sum. Next one, uh, intellectual disability care homes. That's on the map. Total license capacity, license only beds, Medicaid, Medicare beds, on and on and on. So each one of these, you got to know what you're trying to sum up. Okay. Now let's go back to the app and see what happens. Let me zoom up to an area. No matter where I zoom, there's always going to be a bunch of them because this is a lot of data. I'm going to close that layers for the moment just so we can see the map better. And I'm going to click Situation Awareness. It opens across here at the bottom. You can see that I can do a single point with a buffer distance. I'm down here in the bottom left. A single point with a buffer distance. I can draw a line and a buffer distance. Or I can draw a polygon. And it's easier for me just to draw the polygon in this example. Um, so I'm going to draw a polygon. And this could be, let's say I was following city limit lines, or here I'm, I'm going to say somewhat within this boundary of the road, what, whatever you do, and click. Now it has found all the facilities. I'm not quite sure why they didn't draw. But if I go down this list, there's, oh, when I click the tabs, they draw. This is what it means when it says tab. Each of these is a tab. So add tab makes this layer. Within that layer, I did these summaries. There's a, for general hospitals, it found five. They're now displayed. There's ICU beds, surgical beds, NICU beds, on and on and on. Uh, let's try assisted living centers. So there were, I, I can't see how many were found. Uh, 726 beds, uh, and like that. Renal dialysis centers, eight. Okay. Now you wouldn't think it, but every one of these medical centers was impacted by the uh, by COVID because their ability to get equipment was hampered, uh, their ability to even operate was hampered, so um, they really needed to know all of this information. It was a simple lab for me to build up, but this thing has gotten tons and tons of use and we've gotten a lot of really positive feedback. So there you can see what kind of apps you, you can make. Uh, and these are done with either the existing templates out of RTS Online, with the Web App Builder, with the Operations Dashboard, or even with the new Experience Builder, which I've used with my job in Eulis, but I've not uh, used on an egret deployment yet. Now you can send these things out separately, or you can put them into an atlas. And I like to do them into an atlas because you can distribute one URL 
and then everyone is, is able to, to uh, see all of the maps. Uh, you don't have to try to send, if you did 10 apps, 10 different URLs, it gets to be a, a, a hassle. And I'm going to show the live, live example. This is the TDM Region 1 Map Atlas. We've had this up since um, probably March the 15th of this year, and I think it's, gonna, it's now a permanent uh, fixture in their EOC. I can't see this ever going away. So let's take a look at that. So this is what the TDM Region 1 Map Atlas looks like, and you may recognize it as the template Map Series Story Map with the tabs down the side. Uh, you can also do this with the tabs across the top. In fact, we'll see some of those embedded within this story map. Again, the nice thing here, I share one URL and uh, it's always updated. Even if I come in and change the maps or put something else in its place, the URL does not change. It changes within the app, not the URL that the user gets. So there's evacuation hotels, that was from Hurricane Laura. Uh, protected infrastructure I can't show you, food network I can't show you. Um, the dishes collection site. So these are some sort of warning. These are testing locations uh, all over the state right now. And that's live data. Daycare facilities, we just looked at that map. The Texas state agencies, this was the one I talked about earlier that we built all the new data sets for. State health care facilities, uh, North Texas venues I can't show, the Daily Council dishes, I can show that. So this is a dashboard that they built. The um, medically underserved areas, we just built that one. So as they begin to do um, more testing and begin to do vaccine distribution, they want to know which areas are medically underserved because that will be more of a challenge to get vaccines into those areas. We also have links from the National Weather Service. There's the link for the state prison map now. They took that one over, so that we don't have to do it anymore. These are all going to take a, a bit to draw, so I'm going to move on. But uh, you can see that just by doing those tabs, and there's probably 18 tabs on this map, by doing those tabs, I can keep this map updated, add and subtract things, but I never change the URL. There's the prison map. So I'm going to wrap it up at this point. Obviously, I could go on for days and days and show you all the cool things that we did. Uh, but the takeaway, learn to use these tools. Use them in your regular work. Look at the online training tutorials. Uh, try out the different apps that probably you've not used before. See what applications they work in, what applications they don't work in. The heat of a disaster is not the time to start firing up training videos and trying to decide if an application is going to work for you. You needed to have known that beforehand. You also want to practice these with the local and regional response teams. Make sure they understand how they work, let their people play with them. They may have some constructive criticism on how to make them better, which is always good. And then don't be afraid to dive in, do a fully customized app or map from scratch. There's a lot of templates out there that will get you a, a good head start on these. But many times the thing you're trying to do is not the same as the thing everyone else was trying to do. So, you know, build one from scratch once in a while, see what happens. But uh, more importantly, get your team involved. If you're uh, the GIS person with a city, get your other city people involved with it. Whether they be GIS people or not, let them understand how it works. Uh, if you have a regional cooperative, get everyone going on this. We, we get to do this on a statewide level. So um, we get a lot of people involved with it. So that'll wrap it up. If you have any questions for me, you can contact me at director at texasegret.org or you can contact me at info at gisguidebooks.com. Uh, also, if you go to that gisguidebooks.com, you'll see my newest book. I'll hold up a shameless plug. And it's um, Building Web Maps and Apps with ArcGIS Online for Disaster Response and Other Critical Issues. It goes over all the things I just went over in, in this uh, presentation, plus a whole lot more. So feel free to contact me if you have questions.